Hello everyone and welcome into my craft space. Um, it has been a long time coming and we are on the next step of our mass make for these Reader's Digest journals. I definitely did not forget about this project that we had going and my apologies it's taken so long to get to the next video. Um, since the last video it's been Christmas and holidays and collaborations and um, I was sick here for a little while so lots of things have happened and um, I definitely still wanted to get this next step done on all of these journals and uh, it's a shame to not get them finished since we have them this far. Now like I said in, a, in the previous videos you could definitely just stop here and have this whole stack of uh, book covers ready to go whenever you are ready to make a journal. It's nice to have them at this stage because the next step is just putting in your signatures. So you could put these on your shelf and um, you know when you're ready to make a journal just grab the one you want and be good to go. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and put the signatures in. So if you haven't watched the other previous videos, um, definitely check that out. I will put them in the links below. Uh, so here's just a quick recap. I've taken 15 Reader's Digest. These are um, ones I have purchased from thrift stores or various used ways because these are vintage books. Um, just to be clear, vintage is 20 years or older, antique is 100 years or more. So these are definitely vintage. They're all mostly from the 1970s. And um, we removed the book block. So this part here, we removed that and uh, we fixed up the spine put in some tape, some glue, some chipboard, and some fabric. And uh, then I created these signatures. I also did stitch on some of them um, because before you put these in with your pamphlet stitch like we're gonna do next, any sewing that you wanna do, you definitely wanna do that. Uh, you can still sew on elements and then add them in later with glue. Uh, but if you want to sew in your signatures anywhere, like on the pages like this, uh, it's definitely easier to do it before the signature is sewn into the book. So I have all my themes and signatures all put together, a variety of papers, um, some envelopes, some music page, some index cards, uh, ledger paper, scrapbook paper, a little bit of everything. And we're gonna go ahead and poke these holes today um, and get our signatures sewn into these covers. So the things that we will need um, are real simple. We need a needle. I like to use a tapestry needle because it has a really big eye on it uh, to hold both the thread and to allow me a little easier time of threading it. Then we need this template and if you uh, haven't made a template, go back to video, I think it was two in the series, and it will show you how we made this template and why we made the template. Uh, but basically, this is how we lined up our holes when we did our punching and our eyelets, and now we're gonna use it to make con the same consistent holes in our signatures before we sew them in. So uh, that is the last thing to punch holes with, and um, all of our signatures will need to have holes punched into them. And then you also need some sort of thread or twine. Now I've heard some people don't like to use Baker's twine because they said it's broken or whatever before. Um, I haven't seemed to have any problem with it, but you can use um, jute, you can use uh, embroidery floss, you can use just a, a really thin thread. I'm not sure what kind of thread this is because I got it at the thrift store and I just really love it. I'm gonna be sad when it's all gone. Um, so, you know, any number of threads that you have or you like to use twine, um, this Baker's twine came from the Target dollar spot. Uh, you get 15 yards for a dollar and I just think it's great. I haven't had any issues with breaking or anything like that. Um, and I love the extra color and charm that it gives to the books. But you know, if you are worried about twine breaking, definitely switch to maybe using some embroidery floss. You can get some pretty good thickness there and a variety of colors as well. So use whatever you have or whatever you feel is best for your project. One other thing too, um, obviously not this, uh, ribbon for this book particularly um but if you wanted to put a ribbon closure in and you wanted it to go around your book or whatever uh, now would be the time to go ahead and do that you could just simply glue this in you could put an eyelet here and uh, the same spot on the other side and put this ribbon through you could put the ribbon not going across the spine and just across each side of 
the cover here and then you would be able to tie it or you could punch holes and do hitch pins um, so many ways to do covers or not covers closures but um, however you want to do that a lot of times I forget about them and um, don't don't even need one per se so um, it just depends if you like to have a closure feel free to add one in um, if you don't know, just go ahead and move on and you can figure a closure closure method later. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and um, find our first one. I have a couple that I don't have any signatures for because as I was going back through, um, this one I wanted to save. I have a Raggedy Ann and Andy themed book I want to do and I think this will just be perfect for that. So I want to go ahead and save this one for that. And um, so I don't have any signatures to put in there just yet. I'm going to use a lot of stripes and polka dots in red, white, and blue. And I think that will be really cute. And these two, I just didn't feel matched the papers that I had. So I'm going to save those for something else. All right. And then these ones, um, I have a couple. I still need to do um, the spine process. So these ones aren't quite ready to go in yet. I'm still going to go ahead and punch the holes in the signatures so that they will quickly uh, catch up and be ready in the mask making process. So um, let's go ahead. You will need your big bite if you have one. If you don't and you're using an awl, that's fine too. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get my big bite out and punch the holes. Now this is a, the bigger version, they, they, initially they called it the Crocodile 2 or the Big Bite, um, made by We Are Memory Keepers. I've been using it in the other series of this uh, same mask make here as well. The reason you need this versus the other Crocodile, the smaller one, uh, is because we need to be able to reach to the center here. So your uh, original Crocodile, I think it only has like a uh, four or six inch reach I don't remember at the moment um, but this one will let you reach 12 inches in to where um, it was designed for scrapbookers using 12 by 12 paper so it will definitely give you that 12 inch reach and you can put holes anywhere within that space so that is what we need to get to the center here okay so um, a good part of why we made our template on paper is because we can fold in half and we want to fold in half just like this where these holes are in half so this can go in the crease of our signature so we want to make sure all of our papers are where we want them to be so you know if you want them all at the bottom if you want these smaller ones you know however you want them staggered throughout the signature now is the time to make sure they are in place and that you have everything you want to have in here in here and uh, all is well. This one I haven't decided if I'm going to turn into a little pocket or not, um, but it's there and I can do whatever I need to do. And you want to kind of take your fingers and do like this and make sure that everything is even. And um, then we'll go ahead and set our template right in here. And we want to make sure the top that we marked is at the top. And if you're using an awl, you could, um, I'm gonna go ahead and clip this so it doesn't move on me. And you can see how it kind of wrinkles. We wanna make sure it's nice and flat. And um, you can clip the bottom too if you want to, or you can just hold it. So now you can use a marker and just uh, put three little holes in where your, your holes are, or you can just leave it um, and go ahead and punch. So, I'm going to just go ahead and punch and we'll put these right into the crease here and you want to be careful, oops, I'm going to be careful the way that you're holding it so that you get all the papers. I guess I am going to go ahead and clip the bottom just so that we don't have anything moving. There we go. All right. And so the, the best part about using this big bite is that you have a bigger reach so I can get right in here. And I want to make sure that my holes go right on the fold. And we punch through everything. And there's the next one. Let's see, there we go. 
And then the last one we can either reach, just keep going here, or we can turn it around if that's a little easier. I'm just gonna go ahead since I'm already in here and we'll punch it out. Okay. So then we can take these clips out. And take our little template out and we've got our holes. So you can see um, our holes are, are in there and good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch all throughout these, so it'll be 30 signatures because I have 15 books with two signatures each and I need to punch, 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 just like this um, throughout all of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm not gonna set it to fast forward or anything. It's, it, it's not that interesting, guys. You really just put your template in here, line it up, punch, 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 and do the next one. Punch, 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 do the next one. Punch, punch, punch. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. When we come back, we'll have them all punched. Okay, we are back. And as you can see, I've made a beautiful mess here. <laughs> so I've got all my holes punched. I've got my needle threaded with the color of thread that I'm going to choose uh, for my signature here. And some other things I wanted to mention quickly is while you're punching your holes, make sure all of your pages are the right orientation. If they are a page that needs to be directional, make sure that... Um, yeah, see, I think this one might even need to still turn around like this. Uh, make sure everything is lining up. If you want to make any changes, it's one of the last chances you're going to get to do that. Um, of course, don't let that stress you out because it's paper, it layers. You can always um, go over it. So I've got my needle threaded here with some baker's twine that I feel like matches really good. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure this goes through every single hole. If you keep them lined up, that definitely helps a lot. But you wanna make sure every single paper goes through. I'm going through the center hole first. You also will want to decide which, um, which, signature goes where so which one do you want to see when you first open the book um, I think I want this red one to be first so I'm gonna go ahead and put this one uh, in the second signature column here so right through that eyelet I'm gonna go ahead and pull it through now some people cut their thread and um, they cut it usually three lengths of the book or whatever but I always feel like that kind of wastes and I don't I don't want to create extra waste so I just leave it attached use what I need to and move on you can do whatever works best for you. Again, all through those holes, I'm going through the top hole. This is just a simple pamphlet stitch I've done many times on this channel before. Um, it is pretty easy. I am no seamstress. Um, I am still learning to sew, but uh, the pamphlet stitch is pretty easy. So you go through the center, either through the bottom or the top, whichever hole you choose to go through next, and then back through the center here. And of course, make sure you get all of your pages. And this one is wanting to be stubborn. So we're gonna go back through that center hole, all the pages. And then you want your string. You wanna make sure everything is good back here. What's going on there? Tighten it up, all looks good. And you wanna make sure your strings, we can pull our needle out here, uh, are just like this so you want this center one in the center and you don't want any string going through the string so you just want it individual threads on its own just like this and you want one of these on each side you can decide how long that you want your tails to be if you want any you can also just cut them flush um, now some people take the center signature and glue it together so you don't see these strings and that is a preference you can choose um, some people will put charms or dangles or beads or whatever and kind of make a uh, like a little bookmark if you will or just some extra decoration and I like to pull them just a little shorter because I don't need to waste any of this thread pull it tight and go ahead and uh, cut this to match and tie it what did I just do with the scissors here we go now I feel like this is the part of the bookmaking process that's kind of exciting and everybody's like, wow, well, exciting, you gotta do all this stitching. Um, but it is because we've taken this book, we've broken it down, we've built it back up, and now here is where the book gets its pages. So I feel like 
this is the part of the process where the book becomes a book again. So it's kind of fun and exciting, I think. All right, whoops. I'll just go ahead and give this a couple knots. Two or three is pretty good. I think these are square knots. I am not a knot expert. <laughs> um, but just enough to hold it in there. And you want it to be a little bit tight because this is what's holding your pages to the book. So there is one signature. Make sure everything is doing what it's supposed to do. And then we'll go ahead and do the next one. And um, I apologize in advance. I am not very good at threading these needles. So sometimes it takes me a little while to get this done. That's why I use a big tapestry needle, but it's still pretty difficult um, for me to see. I should use a needle threader, um, but there we go. That one wasn't so bad. All right, we'll take our next signature, open up to the center, make sure we've got all of our pages needle in the center just like so through the center of the eyelet in the book pull it through i always go to the top one next i don't know why it doesn't matter if you do top or bottom but that's just the sequence i seem to always do um, you'll get your own rhythm down the more books you make so through the whole of the book through all the pages which doesn't seem to want to go Hopefully I'm not too far off camera. Sorry, guys. Every single hole. And if this happens, they kind of come apart. You can do every page individually if that's what it takes to get them all on there. There we go. Right through. Pull. We're going to go down through the bottom ones. Make sure we've got them all through that bottom eyelet, through the book. Pull it here and make sure everything is straight and looking great on the back. Right back through the center, through the hole and through all the pages. And sometimes it will try to just go through part of the pages. So you gotta make sure you get them all. There we go. Don't wanna go through that center string. You want this string to be independent on its own. Go ahead and pull this off. And then here, I usually just kind of pull uh, the excess thread that I don't need back through. Since it's still on the spool. And I can decide how long I want these little tails. So pull this center string, pull this out here, and that shortens it up. Pull the center string go that's pretty good we still have to make our knots go ahead and trim this and then um, remember you want one string in the center and one string on each side we'll go ahead and tie this and you want to pull tight but you don't want to pull so tight that you you break your thread I've done that before <laughs> all right couple ties and that one is done and just like that we have our two signatures in our book and it looks great now I know this fabric has been bugging some of you and we're gonna take care of that in the next couple of steps um, after we get all of these sewn in so the next step will be um, putting fabric on our spine deciding our covers and then really guys this is where you decide if you want to continue to mass make these or if you want to continue to just work on each book as a theme individually um, i do have some ephemera and some pockets i'll be making um, kind of mass making style but then after that i probably will work on each book independently um, just to make sure i give it all the final touches and attention that i feel each book um, i make should have so there we go, there's two. I'm gonna go ahead and keep stitching and um, I will check back with you as soon as I have those done. Okay, so I'm down to the last two, stitching in all of these pages and signatures and I just thought I would bring you along for the ride uh, because I can do a time-lapse for two and it's not 
too terrible to watch and it gives you another glimpse at the uh, simple pamphlet stitch that I am doing. So we'll do this one not on fast forward, just one more chance to see um, how I do this. So I just put my needle through the center. If you want your strings to wind up on the inside of the book, you start inside the book. If you want the strings to wind up outside of the book, you do outside first. Um, when I am doing a hidden spine, I like the strings to be on the inside because then I can decide if I just want to snip them off uh, or if um, even just gluing those pages together to hide them or put like a charm or a dangle and just kind of embrace them, uh, whatever works best. And then I go through the top here. Hopefully I'm staying in camera so you guys can see. And pull this through all the way down to the bottom, through all the pages, and through here. <laughs> um, I did have one blunder already. I told you guys to really make sure you watch for uh, directional pages, and I do have one page stitched in upside down. So at that point, you can decide if you want to restitch it in and fix it, or you can just cover up the paper, which is what I think I'm gonna do, because that one, um, the twine I used, was very difficult to work with, of course. So, okay, so back up through the center, keeping our thread uh, not threaded through the other thread and separate strings like this, one in the middle, one on either side, and I'm gonna go ahead and snip it off and tie some knots. And I have books everywhere. It's amazing. Um, they don't store very good uh, this way. So if, you, if you're if you mass making them, make sure you have like a box or a little bookshelf or something to put them on uh, while you're working on them. Um, sometimes it's a good idea to put them in a Ziploc bag or some kind of a basket so that you can keep all the pieces for that specific book together when you're working on this many at one time. Okay. Oops, and then just tie your square knot in the center here, and that signature is sewn in. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it on fast forward, and you can watch me stitch in uh, just this last one here, and we'll be good to go. I just realized my other one doesn't have any fabric yet, so I will need to fix that before uh, stitching it in. So this will be the last one. Okay, so I don't know if you noticed or not, but on this one, as I was uh, sewing it in, I noticed I put one of the holes on the wrong column. So I had to pull that out and uh, start over just a little bit, and that is okay. Um, you know, I'd rather catch it now than later, and then I just noticed, I'm getting tired, it's late, uh, that I also put this one in uh, with this writing here upside down. So watch for that, but this one's not gonna show. I'm gonna have fabric going over it and there's nothing else um, in the book that would indicate that it is directional. So not to worry there. Um, so I hope you guys are enjoying this mass make process. I have so many books now um, to work with and so many different themes. I'm super excited. I've got some baby ones, some fall, some glam some cat and dog ones to work with that my daughter might swipe because she's been wanting to make a cat book. Uh, Christmas, spring, um, a little bit of everything. So hopefully it will hold my attention for a little while. And um, hopefully this has helped you guys get your signatures into your books if you are learning to journal or if you are following along with the Mass Make series. Um, let me know down below in the comments uh, if you are making any of these and how it's going. And definitely, if you have any questions, feel free to send me a message as well. So um, make sure you hit that bell, the like, the subscribe, all those great things. Thanks so much for watching, you guys, and stay tuned for the next video where we will cover these spines up with some fabric and work on some covers.
Bye guys, I'll see you in the next video.